Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We're going to be ministering. Um, uh, it is Normally we do this on the first Sunday night of the month. But last week we had our annual uh, Down East Barbecue and Fried Chicken after service. And, uh, you know, 80 pounds of butts and 20 whole chickens and 10 gallons of potatoes and 7 and a half gallons of coleslaw. Later, and 40 dozen corn sticks, uh, we didn't have the night service. So that's been shifted to tonight. And so we're going to teach on healing. Uh, if you do have prayer calls uh, that you brought, we we'll go ahead and bring them up and put them on the platform here behind me. And uh, we'll lay hands on those afterwards. And, uh, but until then, let's go ahead to open our Bibles to the 103rd Psalm. Uh, those of you who are here with us on a regular basis have heard this sermon before. But when we're, when, you know, um, now I sat in your dad Hagen's ministry for a uh, Oh, well, over 20 years. And, um, you know, you got to the point, he'd be telling, he'd be preaching sermons or telling stories. You could, you could go almost do it yourself because you'd heard it so many times. But, you know, there, was always, there were always people there who hadn't heard it before. Or you heard it for the 300th time and got something out of it you never got before. Revelation came. You know, you, understanding came. Uh, insight came. Um, his last full crusade was over at J.B.C. Hatch's church uh, back in 2003 at St. Peter's World Outreach. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you, best teaching on faith I ever heard him do. There was such an anointing in that service. You could tell he was dealing with something. Um, but he, you know, he, you know, when we come to, uh, can I just take a little side journey as we get kind of dive into this? <clears throat> we think if we get healed, we're never going to die. See, people think, get this idea that, if you, well, if you believe in healing, you'll never die. Well, that's not what the Bible says. It's pointing out the man wants to die. If Jesus doesn't, if Jesus tarries, you're going to die physically. Your body's going to wear out. And to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord, that's far better. Now, that, I'm not talking at 40 or 50 or 60, you know, uh, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. You, know, you, live, you live out what you want, what you got faith for, length of days, amen. Uh, long life, he'll satisfy us. Can you say amen? Um. But, you know, in 2003, Winter Bible Seminar 2003, he told them all, nobody, nobody got it. You go back and listen to the tapes, you get it. He told everybody he was leaving. <laughs> he did. He told everybody he was going to go. They just didn't want to hear it. They, they kind of, you know, when you, when you don't want to hear something, you just kind of act like you didn't hear it. You know, and, you know kids do that, and, and people do that. You know, just, I didn't, they didn't want to hear it. And uh, he told them he was all going home. And uh, he did, and he went home exactly the way he said you're supposed to go home. He said, you're supposed to get up, get dressed, have, have a breakfast, have your favorite dessert, and go home. That's what he had said. He had said that to people private for years. Well, that morning he got up, they had breakfast. Uh, Doc Horton and his wife Jerry were over there with him. And, and she made a strawberry uh, shortcake or something that he loved. And she had made it that morning for him for his breakfast. So he ate his breakfast, had that shortcake, and then looked over at Sister Aretha, smiled, dropped his head. He went, you know, exactly the way he said you go. So, uh, and then, then people on the internet uh, stirred up my competitive nature. They said things like, oh my, my, Kenneth Hagin didn't have enough faith. He, got, he had the faith to die exactly the way he said he would die. How about you, pal? <laughs> you know, did you, are you going to die exactly the way you said you're going to die? Are you going you to get killed some other way? Or are you going to die early? Are you going to get, you know, some other mess? Anyway, when we start teaching on healing, people just get the idea, you know, and they, they, that, that we believe we'll never die or something. You know, outside, outside the circles that, we, that believe in, you know, there are, there are groups of Christians who don't believe God heals people. They believe he can. They believe every occasionally, every once in a while, for some reason beyond everybody's believing under, or understanding he does. But they don't believe you can actually on purpose get healed. Well, we're, we're going to talk about healing belongs to all of us. And uh, we're going to start in Psalm 103. And, uh, as I, and, and the whole purpose of kind of getting in that whole vein was this. We, you may have heard this before. But you know what? It never hurts to hear it again. Amen? It never hurts to hear that, you know, uh, the just shall live by faith. It never hurts to hear that God wants to prosper us. It never hurts to hear God wants you well again. So we're going to go there. Then we're going to lay hands on the sick. If anybody needs it, pray with prayer calls, take communion, and uh, have, a, just a, have a good time tonight. Amen. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Now, you can use this verse after you started eating if you forgot to pray before you started eating. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. That takes care of the food you already ate. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Bless the Lord all my soul and forget not his benefits. Underline the word benefits. Why? Because he's getting ready to list some of those benefits. See, if we would read the Bible and not listen to people with, with letters behind their name who don't know what they're talking about sometimes. I heard Dad Hagen say one time, he said, you know, he listened to somebody talking about some Bible subject, and after they got done, I mean, he, he, he thought, Lord, they, they just don't even know what they're talking about, and then saw they had Ph.D. behind their name. He said, I finally figured out it meant post hole digger, because the post hole digger's got more sense than that. You know, you know, your spouse, some, you know things like, uh, you know, it was no big deal that the children of Israel crossed over on the Red Sea on dry ground, because the water was only six inches deep there. Glory to God. The whole army and horses and men and all drowned in six inches of water. Hallelujah. Are you here? Glory to God. You can't even get a horse's head down in six inches of water. Amen. You know? No big miracle that, got, that Jesus fed the 5,000 with the, uh, the, the uh, five loaves of the two fishes. The loaves of bread were bigger in those days. Well, what about the fishes? The way there was Moby Dick and his wife they brought to the mill? Are you here? So, you know, uh, people just get crazy about stuff. Now, here it says here that forget not his benefits. What are the, what's the first thing it says? Who forgiveth all that iniquity? Oh, thank God. I said, thank God. Oh, thank God we have a Lord who's come and he's shed his blood. He's redeemed us by his blood. He's washed us by his blood. Glory to God. And that all our iniquities are washed by the blood. Glory to God. Amen. That's a benefit. <laughs> we come into the kingdom, amen? And even after you even after you say that you sin, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. With what? His blood. He forgives all your iniquities. Next, what's the next verse? Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. I like this next one. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. <laughs> So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Those good things will renew your youth. I said those good things. What? He's going to satisfy your mouth with good things. I get around people and bad stuff's happening to them. They're well, you just don't ever know what the Lord's doing. We don't understand why God's doing what he's doing. But for some reason, he's doing this to me. No, he said he satisfies you with good things. Glory to God. Because somebody shout Hallelujah. Can I get one? Help me, Jesus, an amen or uh, something. Amen. Act like an old charismatic and say, Shanda. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. You got to be an old charismatic to know what that means. Glory to God. Let's back up here, though. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now, I was watching a number of years ago. Well, it was on, actually, it was on TBN. And Paul Crouch had a guest on there, and, 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 and well-respected. I respect him. I, uh, uh, his ministry has been a blessing, uh, and it's particularly in the arena of salvation to a lot of people. I mean, he's, he's blessed a lot of people. But um, he had him on there, and they were talking about Psalm 103, this very verse, you know, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. And, um, you know, that guy just got to preaching. You know, preacher, preachers just need the right kind of whatever. They go to preaching. You know, and he got on to, and he got, began to preach how God forgives the prostitute, how God gives, forgives the beggar, how God forgives the murderer, how God forgives the destitute. I mean, whatever, no matter what you've done, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus forgives you. I mean, he went off. Well, if you're evangelist and you preach the salvation, you can go off on that verse. He forgives all your iniquities. I can go off on it. Yeah, you got the preacher could come. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> and the phone banks lit up. I mean, all those prayer partners up there, all those people were taking the telephone calls and writing down the salvations. I mean, the, the banks off. I mean, they're, they're just ringing off the hooks up there. Keep calling. Keep trying to call. All the phones are busy. People are getting saved. Glory to God. They just went on and on and on and on. There, I can't not hear myself real good. Praise God. They went on. And finally, after, you know, after a while, it, it kind of died down because, you know, uh, so many people called in or whatever. They were bringing the stacks of the things out, the salvations, and they're all excited. And uh, then that, that evangelist looks over at, at, at Brother Cross and says, you know, Paul, the rest of that verse says, who healeth all thy diseases. He said, you know, all don't, don't always mean all. I like the fell out of my seat. Now, before you went off and preached like a crazy man, 
It doesn't matter if you're a prostitute. It doesn't matter if you're a murderer. If you're a drug dealer. If you're a drug addict. Jesus forgives you. All your iniquities. Hallelujah. He gets everything goes, but he doesn't heal all your diseases. Now, what happened to the word all? Because in fact, a little bit before, he lit up the whole place preaching on all iniquities being forgiven. But he got over to disease. What? Your head gets in the way. Our mind gets in the way because we see people die sick. You just can't see in the spirit and see people die unsaved. Jesus came to save all the sinners. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, that's not universal. You can't go out and preach everybody's going to get saved. His will is that everybody gets saved. You see? Well, whatever God's will. I mean, he's sovereign. Everything. No, folks, let me tell you something. If that's the way it worked, the day that Jesus was raised from the dead and shed his blood and that salvation was made for all men, everybody on the planet would have been saved and they'd all gone to heaven. That would have been the end of the thing. Hello? We wouldn't have had a lost songs. We wouldn't have when we all get to heaven. Well, we would all just been there. You know, we, we wouldn't even been there because we wouldn't have got born. No, it doesn't work that way. His will is, that, you know, and here's how we know his will. How do you know that the Bible says in the book of Revelation that, that when they open the land's book of life, those whose names weren't blotted out? Why, 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 do, why are their names gotten blotted out? Because whenever, when Jesus was raised from the dead and his blood was shed, he put everybody's name in the Lamb's book of life. His will is everybody be saved. But people died without him and died in rejection to him and they got blotted out. See, God's plan was everybody get saved. Man, what is, what, that's going to be rough in hell to know your name was in the book and, it, and it's under the blot because you wouldn't accept Jesus. <clears throat> so God, God forgives all iniquity. And just because there's a little, you know, my Bible we got, who forgives all your iniquities, semicolon, who healeth all thy diseases. Amen. The semicolon didn't change the meaning of all. All meant all with iniquities. It means all with diseases. Y'all hear you gone home. Jesus bore our sicknesses at the same time he bore our iniquities and our sin. Hallelujah. The third uh, epistle of John, a personal letter, where John wrote to one of his friends, he said, Beloved, I pray, or wish, King James, above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Now, I, I, I like this. Now, this, is, this is the disciple that Jesus loved. This is the one at the Last Supper who laid his head on Jesus' chest. This is the one that Peter got a little bit jealous about. What about him? You know, because, you know, Jesus basically kind of told Peter how he's going to die. He's going to die as a, as a martyr. And Peter's like, well, what about him? Of course, Jesus said, you know, if it, what is it to you if I, if, I, if I want him to stay here until I come back? What does that matter to you? You do what I told you to do. And, of course, then the rumor went out that, you know, John was still, I, I had a roommate at Ramah who believed that John the Baptist, not John the Baptist, John, um, the, the Apostle John, or John the Revelator, as some people want to get that song goes, uh, is still alive somewhere on the planet. Dear Lord. And even the Bible says, and then rumor went forth that, he you know, he wouldn't die until Jesus came back. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus says, what is it to you that if he were to do that? Okay? You know, pe people get dumb. You know, how do you get dumb? Not read your Bible the right way. Amen? So Jesus bore our sicknesses and diseases at the same time he bore our sin. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. And somebody, is, any, is it the heat on in here? Somebody turn the heat on? I'm warm. That's a hint. Someone wants to run back there and turn the air conditioner on just, just, just enough to cool it off a little bit. Don't put it on 40. Do y'all know that if, it's, if your house is 85 and you come in and put the air conditioner on 50, it's not going to get any colder any quicker? Some people think it's going to get colder quicker by putting it on 50 than putting it on 70. No, it ain't going to get any colder any quicker. Thank you, Dick. It's not going to get any colder any quicker. Where did I tell y'all to go first? Isaiah? Look at Isaiah chapter 53. If you back into first chapter 52, you find out there at the very end, this is the beginning of a discourse in reference to Jesus. Um, verse 13 of 52 says this, Behold, my servant sh uh, uh, shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage 
was marred more than any man in his form more than the sons of men. What, that, that was a picture of the cross. He became so distorted from the sickness to sin coming on him from the beating and the rods and the whippings and the, you know, and all, and the crown thorns and, all this, and the crucifixion that he didn't even look like a man. That's why they had, darkness had to come on the face of the earth for a period of three hours. When sin came on him, how many of you have ever seen somebody live in a life of sin? ABC ran a special a few years ago, and they had this, this prostitute they were talking to. And I, looked, I thought, dear Lord. I mean, you know, she's got long hair, but she looks like she's 70. And they asked her how old she was. She was 29. I'm not, I'm not being facetious when I say she looks 70. That woman looks 70. Well, she lived to hard drugs, sin. It'll, it'll, it'll just wreak havoc on your life. <coughs> and so Jesus on the cross became sin. Not only did he become sin, every sickness and disease known before, to, from, and before after this. Pre, pre this time, during that time, and after that time came on Jesus on the cross. Well, you've seen somebody with, with can skin cancers? How about boils? How about all kinds of other skin diseases? That's just on the outside. How about internal diseases? I mean, sickness will, make, will, will, will just distort the body. So his visage was marred more than any man's. Verse 15 He'll sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall consider. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now let me ask, how, who's believed the Lord's report? you got to believe the report. And we sing that song, whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. His report says, I am healed. His report says, I am filled. I mean, we have, that's, that's a dance and can't meet in the Holy Ghost song. All right? Hallelujah. But who's before you're going to believe? Well, I went to the doctor. He says, you got three days. You're going to be dead. Well, who's report you're going to believe? I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Long life, I'll satisfy thee. Show me thy salvation. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God's word. You're going to believe the doctor. Well, the doctor knows what he's talking about. Duh. Jesus doesn't. Hello? And as a matter of fact, he's called the Lord thy physician. You know, the Jehovah Rapha, the Lord thy physician, the Lord that healeth thee. Um, hallelujah. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when, you know, that, that's, that, this is uh, saying this. He doesn't, ha he's not charismatic. Jesus didn't wear t skinny jeans and have bed head. Okay? And, and, you know, and, and, and act, act real metro or whatever to get people's attention. He wasn't, you know, the most handsome guy. On the, he had no form of comeliness. Are, are, are you here? And when we shall see him, there's no beauty in him that we should desire him. Jesus didn't draw people because he was, you know, debonair GQ material. I'm not saying he's ugly, but the Bible didn't say he was good looking either. See, we're, we're so attracted. I mean, you know, the, the modern church world, they want, they, you got you to have the right haircut. You got to have the right clothes style. You got to be cool and slick. You got to be metro. You got to be this. You got to be whatever the hottest, newest, latest, greatest fat is. You got to do it to be on the end crowd so people come follow you. Jesus didn't have any of that. But I'll tell you what he was. He was anointed. He had the goods, praise God. He had things that people had need of. Amen. Bedhead won't get you healed. And, I'm, and I can't hardly watch somebody in skinny jeans. You got a guy wearing skinny jeans. I'd say, you know, that's, you know, look, I just, go put on some regular clothes, man. Get you some loose-fitting Levi's or something. I mean, you know, stop acting like a girl. Anyway. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Yet we did esteem him smitten, stricken of God, and afflicted. And um, because I have a different Bible and I haven't transferred it over here, um, he, is, he is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. The word sorrows there, I believe, is coily, C-H-O-L-I. Am I right, Brother Bill? I'm right. All right. Hallelujah. Meaning is better meaning is sicknesses. He's a man of sicknesses, acquainted with grief. is macab. And it means, that actually means sorrows. King James, you know, the translators, the, the, uh, the Strong's, definitions these are um but you go deeper studying sometimes in some of the surfacey ones and it says so he was acquainted with grief or sorry so he's a man of sicknesses acquainted with grief we esteem his face, faces we despise and esteem him not surely he has borne our griefs coily sicknesses and carried our sorrows macabre okay griefs 
Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The uh, chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now the reason the present tense is used is, 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 is in the present future, meaning that that's a, it's a coming event. It's, it's, it's prophesying of the future. And when he gets here by his stripes, we are healed. Now you read that to people sometimes. They go, oh, that's talking about the spiritual sin, sickness of sin. They get all, you know, goobity gocky with it. They, do. they just say, that means that Jesus came to take care of the spiritual sickness of sin. Even put on a fake voice. You don't get that real theological voice. You know, they sound intelligent. PhD, remember what it means. Anyway, now, I say that with a, with a little, uh, little humor because Brother Bill's got his little PhD. A couple of them, don't you, Brother Bill? Hallelujah. So I, I used to call him Maximus, Doctorus Maximus, but then there was some Greek philosopher or something that wasn't a really good guy that was called Doctorus Maximus or something. So he said, I, I can't call him that anymore. Hallelujah. But here it says, with his stripes we're healed. People, well, that's just a spiritual sickness of sin. Really? Well, let's go to 1 Peter 2.24. All right? 1 Peter 2.24 is, is the um, declaration that this, the fulfillment of this prophecy and so uh, Peter, writing to the church, says, um, we'll back up verse 20, uh, 21. For even here, hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not. And he committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. Now, Isaiah uses the present future tense that it's, it's prophecy. He's coming to heal us. Peter uses the past tense. It's an accomplished fact. Okay? Isaiah prophesying of the suffering servant to come. Peter uh, uh, declaring that the servant has come and, and fulfilled that prophecy. By his stripes ye were healed. But they still say, that's the spiritual sickness of sin. Well, let's go to Matthew. Chapter 8. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes if you just let people talk long enough, they'll hang themselves. All right? You know? And then when you give them Bible, they'll, they'll look at you and sound like a motorbike. Bup, 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 bup. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 8. We'll look down here around, oh, verse 16 or so. Well, well let's back, back up verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. Peter had a mother-in-law. Just, just in case, you know, the church at the Rome wants to understand that it's okay for, for ministers to be married. Peter had a wife. You don't get a mother-in-law without the wife. They just don't get that. I mean, it kind of works in connection one with the other. All right? And, um, and so he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. Now when evening was come, that, that, that late that evening, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Didn't say he forgave them of their sins. Said he healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled by that which the prophet Isaiah, that's the Greek form of Isaiah, Isaiah or Isaiah the prophet said, himself took our infirmities and carry or bear our sicknesses. So Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2, 24, and Matthew 8 make it clear that Jesus bore our physical, everybody say physical, physical. ailments, diseases, and sicknesses. It's not talking about the spiritual sickness of sin. How did he deal with that? The new birth. You get born again. Amen? You receive Jesus as your Lord. Your spirit's born from death unto life. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost comes over you. You confess that he is Lord. You believe in your heart you, uh, that God's raised him from the dead. And you confess him as Lord and you're born again. The spirit of God comes on you. Your spirit's brand new. Old things passed away. Behold, all things became new. Praise God. And all things are of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He who knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thank God for the new birth. Can somebody say thank God for the new birth? That takes care of the sin nature. So it takes care of the nature of sin. 
What happens if I sin after I get saved? Oh, thank God we got 1 John 1. I know some people don't believe 1 John 1 9 belongs to the church. I really don't care what they believe. The Bible has it in there. If you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. You don't confess your sins when you get saved. You confess him as Lord. Why? Because you couldn't count them all. You couldn't get them all. There's stuff you did you forgot about. Hello. So how do you get saved? You confess his lordship. You receive his lordship. He, your, your spirit's born again. Hallelujah. The nature of God overtakes you. And then if you make a mistake or you sin or you, you just rebel and sin, you can confess that before the Lord and the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You don't have to get born again again. Growing up Pentecostal, that's what we thought. You had to get saved again. You know? Uh, Dake in his Bible, 19 reasons a man can be born again again. Can, and and they're, 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 they're all natural. Can you save somebody from drowning more than once? Well, yeah, but that's not the same thing. Like a lot of things he had to say, but that ain't one of them. Hallelujah. So he says here, that, so, uh, and Matthew makes it clear that Isaiah and Peter are referring to physical sicknesses. Okay? And so Jesus bore your sicknesses. Say, Jesus bore my sicknesses. Okay? Now here's the beautiful thing about the things of God. You're not required to choose between being saved spiritually and being healed physically. He made provision for both. Amen. Jesus became sin. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. We just quoted that. He who knew no sin was made sin. Uh, so that, to take care of the sin problem. He was made sick or bore our sicknesses. Matthew 8, 16, 17. 1 Peter 2, 24. Isaiah 53. To take care of the sickness problem. Amen. Galatians 3, 13. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it's written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Have you ever read the curse of the law? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through 61 down there. That's the curse of the law. And it ain't good. You'll be cursed in the city. You'll be cursed in the country. You'll be cursed when you lie down. Cursed when you rise up. Cursed in your body. Cursed in your field. Cursed in your fruit. I mean on and on and on. And that all the diseases of the Egyptians will come on you. Well, now listen, the ones they had were bad enough. And every, every other disease not mentioned in the book will come on you. <coughs> God knew that you'd have some bozo come along and say, well, he only took care of the ones up until Egypt. After that, the new ones you've got to put up with. <laughs> Why? Because the devil is, is slick and people are stupid. They'll listen to the devil. They'll listen to the devil before they'll listen to the Bible sometime. The Bible says one thing and they'll come along and say, well, you know, I just believe. Really? Yeah, I just believe. Oh. What do you believe? I believe, you know, I've, I've, taught, I've taught people, tried to get them healed before. That one of these days, the Lord in his own good time is going to heal my body. Really? You know, you're going to be dead before that day gets here. Yep. Yeah. We'll be doing your funeral. You'll go to heaven. We'll love you. And then people be going around. He got the ultimate healing. Y'all, anybody Facebook? SMH. Shaking my head. If you ever seen on Facebook, that means shaking my head. They're on the other side shaking their head. You know? I mean, people say stuff and you just go, shake your head. Oh, Lord help them. Kind of like that horror, that, that terror horror movie com uh, car commercial. They say, let's get into the running car. Are you crazy? Let's go to the chainsaws. They all run in there and the guy's back there. He pulls his mask up, just looks at him back there and goes, they're just stupid. You know, he's shaking your head. Um, we, we have to understand that Jesus bore our sicknesses and bore our sin. We don't have to choose between the two. And you, we need to stop trying to figure out how to get out of what God has for us. Now, faith doesn't receive later. It receives now. Hope receives later. Hope doesn't receive. Hope just puts it off till later. You know, I believe. I, I talk to people. I, oh, you, if, you, if, you could only, if I could only get you to move over. If I, I could only get you out of the future into the now. If I, I could only get you to see it that you have it now and it's not going to come. You don't have to wait till later. Your hope says I want it. Your hope says that God has it for me out there somewhere. But faith lays hold of it and brings it into the now. Because faith is. Faith is present tense. Amen. And talk to, oh, I believe, brother pastor. I believe. One of these days. No, no, don't. And sit there and tell them. 
No, 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 no. You don't understand. You're, you're not in faith. You're in hope. You're in the future. You're waiting on it. One of these days, the Lord's going, no, 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 no. Sit there and try to correct them 10, 15 times in a row. Not, not, not being mean. Trying to get them to see. Because if I can't get them to see it, they're not going to get it. If I can't get them to see that Jesus has already borne your sicknesses. And it's already available to you. And that if you'll just lay hold it by faith and receive it now, you can have it now. Glory to God. One of these days, I believe the Lord's going to heal me. The Lord's already done all he's going to do. The Lord's already borne your sicknesses. He's already made provision. All you got to do is receive what he did. Listen, not one of the, if you bring somebody down here to say, uh, come on down if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord. Somebody comes down here and you say, listen, I'm going to pray with you. We're going to pray a prayer. And, uh, you know, do you believe that you're going to receive salvation? I believe that one of these days the Lord's going to save me. No, 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 no. Jesus has already done all he's going to do to save you. Are you going to receive what he did for you? I believe, yes, I, I'm telling And they'll say, yeah, I am. I believe that one of these days. And they keep putting it off. And I've, I've dealt with people with sickness that way. Talk to them. And they just sit there. And, they, and the whole time you're talking to them, they're one of these days. And you can't get them over. You want to. Bless their hearts. You know that if you can get them over there, they're receiving that they can have it now. They can get, they can get healed. And you do everything you can do. And, and, and you, and you, and you, now let's back up. Now. Jesus has already carried your sicknesses to the cross. Jesus has already bore your sicknesses. He became sickness for you. Praise God. And by his stripes, ye were healed. It's already done. Jesus already made. All you got to do is receive it by faith. Do you believe that I'm going to lay hands on you? The healing power of God is going to come on you. And you're going to have a manifestation of that which Jesus provided. You'll be made whole, every bit whole. Yes, sir, pastor, I'll tell you that one of these days, he's, he's going to give me my healing. And you leave. You do everything you can do, and you, just, you leave. You leave the hospital rooms. You leave wherever you're visiting with them, and you, and you know they're going to die. You've done everything you know to do, and you know they're going to die because you can't get them. You can't get them over. Barring a manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, you can't get them over in faith. You've done everything you know to do, and just, oh Lord, just be, you know. You, if, we need, we need a miracle. We need, we need a manifestation of, 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 of the gifts of healings because they're not going to get it out of their faith. But they're manifest as he wills, and I can't control that. I've walked, uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's a hard thing to walk away from a hospital bed knowing the person's going to die. And there's not anything you can do to change it because you can't get them to change. They've put it off into the future. Oh, you want them to get it so bad. I mean, if you could get it for them, you would. You want him to see it so bad. You just want to kind of reach up there and slap him upside the head real hard. Maybe it shake him up enough that they would see it. Then the family would be mad at you. They wouldn't have you doing anything at the funeral. They wouldn't have you. They'd leave the church. They'd be mad at you for hitting mama or hitting daddy or hitting brother or hitting whoever you hit. But we, we, we don't quit teaching the word just because somebody didn't get it. The word's still true. I said, the word's still true. You keep preaching what the word says. Well, why didn't they get it? I, you know, listen, I, I don't know why they did. They weren't, they, they just wouldn't get, they couldn't get him over. Some, I mean, you know, you don't want to, listen, you don't run to the families after, you know, people say, why did that? You can't run to the family and say, well, I'll tell you, they didn't have any faith. You're stupid. If you're a pastor and you tell people that, you're stupid. Hello? You, you know, some things you've got to leave alone. Go back and teach the word. Jesus took, went to that one place, couldn't heal any sick folks. Savior so lays hand on a few folks with minor ailments. And then about, he marveled because of an unbelief. Then went around about their village just teaching. The only way to fix what they had going on there was to teach what the word said. So we'll come back and teach the word. We will never back off teaching what the word says, even if people die. We've had, people, we had somebody die in church one time. Near a service. Well, come to find out, you know, they were dealing with some heart issues. They stopped taking all their medicine. Nobody told them to. We didn't preach that. We don't preach stop taking your medicine. I don't. You get a word from heaven. You know it's from heaven. You, you, you follow the Holy Ghost, but don't, don't you, Pastor, they ain't going to tell you to stop taking your medicine. You just start getting better. You don't need as much. You go to the doctor and say, they would just start reducing it and start reducing it. Eventually, you come off of it. 
Now, I know he's told some people, go home for your stuff in the toilet. You, you, somebody hears that testimony, and they go do it, and the Lord didn't tell them to do it. They, they'll be back at the dock the next day. One woman one time went to a meeting, and uh, there was this lady there. Had, you know, y'all know what Coke bottle glasses are? Those are ones that are so thick, the eyes look, because they're, 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 they're eyes, their eyesight's so bad, they have to have really, really thick glasses to be able to see. And uh, there was this woman there, and she got prayed for, and, 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 and glory, the good Lord said, throw your glass off and stomp, and she did, and she got healed right there on the spot. Some other woman saw, it, saw that in the service. Said, well, I'm going to do the same thing. Went home and took her glass off, stomped them. Almost had three wrecks. Ran over the curb. Knocked a couple trash cans out the next week driving. Came back to the minister and said, look, I, I don't understand. That woman went to the service and, you know, she, she, well, uh, she took off her glasses, stomped on them, was hit, instantly healed. I, I've been running right here. I've been running over curbs. Almost had three wrecks. Took out a couple trash cans. And, and the minister had enough wisdom to say, listen. That was a manifestation of the Spirit. He told her to do it. He didn't tell you to do it that way. Then go get your glasses. She had to go back and get some more glasses. And, you know, believe the Word. Keep speaking the Word. And over a period of, of a few weeks, her eyes began to get better. And had to get less and less prescription to the point she didn't need glasses anymore. Well, that, see, you can't just do what somebody else did. All right? So, but, you know, this girl stopped, took her, stopped taking her medicine. Come to find out, I mean, her heart was having all kinds of issues, and she stopped taking her medicine. She had heart medicine that was regulating her heart and stuff. And she just, she just won't believe God. She's going to be healed. She's not going to stop taking her medicine. And it, it, it killed her. Well, you know, they began to get better as, after that very hour. They began to mend from that very hour. Not everything's instant. Some things begin to mend. You get better over a period of hours or days or weeks. Amen. Well, you don't get up at the funeral and say, they were stupid. They stopped taking their medicine. You can't do that to the family. You can't do that to the children. You can't do that to the relatives. No, they're with the Lord. The secret thing belongs to the Lord. We know they love the Lord. They know they were born again. They went to heaven. Praise God. Wish they'd listened better. Wish they had done some things differently. There's people, we, we buried people, we wish they just, we, we could have gotten through to them. Then we've had other people who've gotten healed. They got a hold of it, they hear it, they, they hear it. They heard, they received, they acted, and they got it. Praise God. I don't know if Blinda's our poster child. I don't know if she would go with poster child at this point or not, but she's short enough to be a child. Anyway. <laughs> She couldn't see over the monitor to see what I was doing. I said, you're sure enough to be a child. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bill's over there laughing because he can see it on the, television, on, on the cameras. <laughs> oh, glory. She, she had a miracle. She got a brand new heart. 20-some, 20 23 years ago. Doctor documented. But what did, the, what did the Baileys do? They took the word. They spoke the word. They decreed the word. We had word wars. Who could quote more healing scriptures back and forth? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, yeah, I know it says that, and it says this too. Well, I know it says that, but it says this. Hallelujah. You know, Janie carried her cards. She did, we did everything that needed to be done they were doing, and they were getting their faith out there, and before they could do a heart transplant, she got healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you can get, you can receive. Well, the Lord, no, the, the reason that, listen, and, and I tried to do the same thing with other people, One lady came to our church, bad state. She was, she was in bad shape. And I said, here's what you got to do. I'd go visit her. Take, take uh, our assistant at the time with us. We'd go over and visit her. You could still hear the static on the television screen when we got in the house, where they turned it off. I mean, if it had been one of them old ones, you would have seen a little dot in the middle. You know? Where it went, How many of you used to lay there as a kid watched the little dot until it went away? I don't know what we thought we were going to see. We lay there until that, that, that screen would go down, that little dot in the middle. Remember, Joe? Little dot in the middle. You just watch that little black and white dot. You know, and it started getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And it finally go away. You know, it, had, it had all kind of static. You could walk in and put your hair and then pull your hair up to it and everything. Yeah. Cathode ray tube. There was a lot of radiation in the things. Oh, my. But, you know, I give her tapes. Give her, we, we, tape, we had tape series. By all kinds of people on healing. 
just out of our table and take them over there and give her all of them. Got books, many books. Some they did take a lot to read. Little mini books for healing scriptures and, you know, and, and how to release your faith and how to receive your healing and that kind of thing and leave them there, you know, and, and saying, here's, you, tell, tell, the, tell the, the husband, you got to do this every day. You got to get her doing this every day. You got to get her doing this. You know, you don't have time for television. Who cares if Barnabas bit somebody else on Dark Shadows? That's when the old, that's the vampire soap opera from the 70s. Some of y'all remember that one, you know? Who cares what happened on the, as the world turns? Or the young and the restless? Or the edge of night? Who cares who's running around with who? That's, you're dying. And every time I go, you, you, I'm, telling, I'm telling you, I am telling you, every time you go, they, they, they wouldn't let you in the house until they got the TV off and got things straightened up to make it look like they were doing what you told them to do and you knew when you walked in the room. And then you go to the hospital. And they're on, their, they're on their deathbed. And there's not a miracle. They're going to die. They didn't have to die. A number of years ago, we had a, a church that we're out of in Greenville. Um, the pastor called me and asked me, can you go visit with so-and-so? They're, they're in the hospital over in Winston. They're... Um, Remember down here, but, you know, it's a four-hour drive for us to drive up, and you were on our staff. They know who you are. Um, would you mind going over there and visiting for us and ministering to them uh, just as a ministerial courtesy? And, and, and sure, I'll be glad to, you know. I mean, we knew who they were. We knew, we knew the family. We, we, we understood who they were, and, and I've been an assistant pastor in that church, so they knew who I was. So uh, by saving them the trips up here, I could go. Well, I went over there and ministered to them, and, and uh, they had had a, a fusion on their vertebrae in their neck. Now, here's the, the guy's a doctor. And the fusion went bad and got infected. Well, what happens is that they're going to have to undo the fusion. I mean, he could be paralyzed. I mean, he's, you know, I mean, when I get there, he's on that brace with the, the, the bolts in the head and on the shoulders and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, he's in bad shape. And, of course, he knows what's going on in his body because he's a doctor. So the doctors come in and say, well, you got this, 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 this. And, he's, and his brain's going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, the wife's kind of going, huh? But the doctor knows exactly what they're talking about. So I come over there, and I said, look, I'm going to come back tomorrow, and I'm going to bring you a tape player, and I'm going to bring you tapes, and I'm going to bring you some books. I said, if you're not playing the tapes, you need to be sitting in the chair reading the books to them. I said, you just need to do that all the time. I said, you don't have to do it real loud. You don't have to be, you know, disturb all the other patients. It's over in critical unit, one of the critical units, so you don't have to be, you know, boisterous or whatever. You just do this. And, um, and so I came back the next day, I gave it to them, and they thanked me, and I called a couple times, and then went back over, and, and um, he was getting better. And she said, I said, now what are you doing? She said, I, she said I, and I'm sitting over here and I read the books every moment I'm over here. And if I'm not here, the tape's going. And the nurse, I even got the nurses coming in and turning them over because it was, wasn't auto reverse. Got them coming in here and turning it over. Well, I went back, you know, to visit. He was up out walking down the hallways of the hospital. Hallelujah. Went back to visit again. He walked there. I called, I, I called and said, well, they said, well, they, they released us, sent us home. Now, he's still got to stay in this little brace for a little bit longer. He said the, effect, the infection's gone. He went from the, the, the very good possibility of being paralyzed to being healed. Because they did exactly. They, they, they put the word of God in operation. Laid their faith out there and got a hold of it, praise God. I said, laid the faith hold and got a hold of it, praise God. Can you say amen? There is so much more here that we are not going to get to. But how, what do we do? If we'll do what the word says, if we'll take God at his word, whose report are you going to believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. It's a kind of a chant song, you know? People with the microphones go, whose report will you believe? Everybody in the congregation goes, we will believe the report of the Lord. <clears throat> That's better than me trying to go in my high voice. Nathan can do the low voice and the high voice. It hurts mine. Hallelujah. Anybody blessed? All right, so, you're going to receive, so you can receive by believing. Amen? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at 
www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.